Hey, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do HDR light probes for lighting 3D objects in Lightwave or any other package you uh, you use. Basically the idea is that you can get a mirrored ball I um, don't know if you can see this mirrored ball. Uh, I used a silver bauble from uh, a Christmas shop quite a large one and I put a thread on it as you can see here to attach to a tripod I think if you search the net you should be able to find something better mine's actually you can't see it here but at the back it's got a big crack in it and um, so I'll need to replace it soon but it does the purpose here the idea is it reflects as much as the surrounding area as you can uh, get and if you really wanted to get rid of in this case me taking the photo you could go around the other side of the probe and take another photo and join them all together but for the purpose of this tutorial we'll just use this um, I've got three exposures a darker one uh, what I would class as a normal light one and an overexposed one the idea is we're going to use Photoshop and we're going to blend the three together so it gives us a higher dynamic range for when we're lighting in Lightwave, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, so as you can see, I've fired up Photoshop. Um, basically, this is Photoshop CS3, and it's got a built-in automated merge to HDR option, which is what we're going to use. As you can see, it's in the File menu, Automate Merge to HDR. Going to click that basic normal browser we're going to browse for free stills the what I showed you earlier the three stills these are actual NEF files um, which are raw files uh, you don't have to use that although you get better results if you do and obviously um, you can change some of the processing like white balance and things a lot easier in a raw photo uh, I recommend you use RAW if you can, but if you can't, just use what's available. Okay, we're going to import them, click OK. Photoshop do its thing. Basically it lines the photos up and puts them in the order of, of uh, exposure and we get to see the preview before we finalize it is a preview as you can see at the side you we've got uh, the different exposures minus 1.36 the zero which would be the middle and plus 1.32 we can set the white point preview so we can drag this along brighten it or darken it as we want okay so just gonna click OK that's actually building the high dynamic range image there we go right so basically that's what we've got we only actually need the probe for the lighting we don't actually need any of this background although it doesn't matter if you have a little bit in the corner so what we're going to do is trim this um, I've not found a better way to do this in Photoshop so if you have a better way then you'll have to excuse my rather primitive way uh, drag a selection and just press ctrl and x to delete that selection basically I'm just taking away the the edges again ctrl and x to delete ctrl and x best to double click the layer so it becomes a layer and not a background so that you can actually get the transparency behind the layer select control and X now all I have to do is go to the image trim option make sure transparent pixels is set and the top bottom left and right is ticked and there we go one light probe which is H HDR what I'm going to do is I'm going to save three versions uh, which will become apparent um, later on in the tutorials but basically this is the full size version so I'm just going to save as 
and this one's going to be Radiance HDR format. I'm going to call it something memorable. It's at a road, so roadside probe. Obviously, you can call it whatever's more appropriate for you, but that'll do for me. Roadside probe. Okay, so it's saved that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the image size and I'm going to reduce it to around 500 pixels. Basically so we get a smaller probe. This can be useful for um, rendering in, in various situations which I'll explain to you a bit later on. So again, save as radiance format I'm going to give it the same name but I'm going to underscore small so we can keep it all tidy okay that's saved and the next one I'm going to do I'm actually going to put on a uh, blair uh, um, keeping some of the detail in that you don't want it right up there for example where you can't actually see any details so something around for this probe around 7.2 would be good just so you get to see the detail and the, and the colours but it's taken it away and um, the reason for this uh, I will explain to you as we go on but for now I'll just save that so again just like the other probes save to radiance format and underscore bled okay now that's our three probes created and I'll see you in the next application okay welcome to the lightwave part of the tutorial basically what I want to try and do here is show you how to use the light probe that we just created um, to light a 3D object um, you're going to have to excuse the crudeness of the scene um, but it's basically to show you how to use the actual lighting as opposed to how to make it look nice okay so basically I'm going to start by uh, loading in some objects uh, the ground plane a ball and a box open them up as you can see in the viewer and um, that's basically the objects we're going to use the ground plane um, here as you can see is basically to catch shadows and then we've got the ball just some geometry to uh, light and we've got a box as well which again just added geometry um, just scale that up a bit so it looks looks better alongside the ball okay so I'm going to start by loading in a background which we're going to align the camera to and hopefully uh, get a good idea of, of what we what we're going to uh, do okay so in background options we open background options uh, we see the tabs backdrop we'll come back to that uh, compositing background image click load okay I'm gonna go into my folder yours is obviously gonna be different uh, I've got a backplate image of the road of which I took the probe images of um, I've cropped it to 720p for this tutorial but you can use any size obviously uh, it's best if you get the format or you'd be using video footage ideally um, so yeah I've loaded the background image in but as you can see it's not actually showing up in our camera view so you press D on the keyboard and look for camera view background blank we're going to change that to background image and there you go that pops up there. As you can see from that now that our uh, camera is not matching the the camera in the shot 
So basically we just go into the camera settings and uh, click some of these to center it into each display, it makes it easier. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate this 3D camera, try and line up the grid to the road. Uh, it's pretty straightforward on this shot, so um just going to move that about a bit, try and get it looking, don't have to be dead accurate um, for this purpose but that should do us I think. And I'm going to put a keyframe in by pressing enter twice at the zero, um, so that that's good. Right, I'm going to now reposition the objects to give us a nicer uh, um, looking scene. I'll move the plane. Obviously that's too small so I'm just going to stretch that out a bit. That should do us. Drag that along. Set a keyframe by pressing enter which obviously um, allows us to animate. I'm not going to animate anything on this particular uh, scene but it's a good habit to get into. Right, move the ball in position. Again, I'm not trying to achieve anything particularly uh, outstanding here. I'm just showing you um, a real world example of setting up the lighting that I normally use. Obviously, I don't always render balls and boxes, but you get the idea. Okay, so. We have a scene here now, it's looking like it's actually not too bad, it's all got the same angle as the uh, camera shot, or more or less anyway. Um, so if we was to render that now for example, press F9, you would get something like that, which is uh, not very impressive. So we're lacking shadows and a lot of other details. So. Um, we go into the render globals and you see a few tabs up here uh, in your render tab we want to take the box ray trace shadows and I normally check reflection but we're not using it now but I'll, I'll check it anyway now if I render again you see we've got some shadows um, from our light in the scene, this this fellow here. Um, if I saw the sun is sort of coming from the right hand side behind the camera on on the shot, so if I was to sort of just pan it around roughly to kind of match the shot, keyframe it, render again. There you go, you get the idea. Um, that's basically a standard light. So that's uh, how it would normally look in a standard light. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to change the the background, the, the colour of the ground plate to match the background so it looks a little bit... Uh, so we're basically just seeing the ball and the box on the ground. So basically we do that by going into the surface editor, open up the ground plane, along the along the colour path, along the colour section we see T, these are the textures for each different attribute. So we're on colour, we go to the texture, projection, we want a front projection which allows us to select the background plate image okay and we use the texture see there now it, it looks a bit messy but when you actually render that out it will match the background because it's projecting always projecting forward however what we do need to pay attention to when we do this is the luminosity and the diffuse of that background because that allows us to match the background brightness. If I render out a shot now I'll show you what I mean. Uh, 
There you go, as you can see, the background is now, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the background is now uh, visible through the ground plate, however, it's a lot darker. This uh, is why we need to adjust the brightness to match the background. Um, on a normal project, we would render out a separate pass for the shadow pass on the background and that would be alpha anyway so we won't need to bother about this but for the purpose of this tutorial I f figured it'd be nice to show you if you just wanted to render straight out of Lightwave without any tweaking in Photoshop or After Effects if you didn't want to composite anything if it was say like a, a quick proof of concept render or anything like that this is the way that I, I do it there's probably a better way out there, but I've never actually found it. Um, not in Lightwave. And there's some good tools in 3D Studio Max for this, um, which work really well. Um, but I don't think there's anything in Lightwave of similar. Anyway, I'll show you basically the luminosity. We up the luminosity to, I don't know, I guess 20%. Do another render, see what we get. What we're looking for is this line here to disappear uh, basically we're not bright enough so it's a bit of trial and error but get the idea see it's still there now so close that like I said it's probably a lot better method for doing this out there and you're probably sat in your chairs laughing at me but this is the way I do it so that's more or less done. You can you can't really see the line there if I didn't if I didn't tell you there was something there you probably wouldn't have guessed it. Well you would because it's 3D casting a shadow on a photograph but you, you know what I mean. So basically uh, that's that. That's really as good as you can you can get it better than that but that's as, that's your standard lighting setup. So uh, now I'm going to show you how different it will look using the probes that we made earlier. Okay, so another good thing to habit to get into is saving your scene. I'll save over that old one that I that I did for you earlier. Okay, so now uh what I'm gonna show you is how to put the probe that we made earlier in Photoshop into Lightwave and uh light this scene. So basically we go back to the backdrop options in the backdrop tab you see an add environment click that add an image weld double click on the image weld and we see light probe image and we're heading offset pitch offset and brightness so light probe image as you probably guessed we click on that we load an image and we go to the probes that we made out of photoshop uh, roadside probe roadside probe blade and roadside probe small, I'm going to pick the small one for the sake of this tutorial and um, the differences between these three uh, normally um, your small one you, you tend to get a bit better results because um, of the file size compared to the small one is greater and uh, render times sometimes take longer with a big one so I tend to use a smaller one because it's more manageable the blared one however is interesting because sometimes when you render you get like little white uh, glittery artifacts on your render. By blaring your probe that gets rid of that. So I always like to have one pre-blared and then it's it's easy for me to just load that one up instead of this one if I, if I get that problem. Anyway so we're going to open the roadside probe small. So that's loaded in and basically that's telling Lightwave that this probe is to wrap around our scene. Um, we have a backdrop but if we didn't have a backdrop you would actually see the probe. We'll leave the default brightness at 100% although I, I, I will say we'll probably end up increasing that to match the lightness. Uh, heading offset and pitch offset we'll leave for now but that's we use these to match the angle of the sun so we get a similar lighting to the back background okay so we'll close that right, we'll go into the lighting tab 
Now we don't need any of the lighting in this scene anymore because we're using the light probe to light it so we uncheck all that make sure it's all dark like that and we go into the render globals tab and from the render we see global illumination which is how we do this radiosity enable the radiosity leave everything as it is for now and we'll press render depending on your system this will take a bit longer than your normal render okay there we go we can see obviously it's too dark at the minute but if you take a look at the actual shading and the lighting on the objects in the scene you can see we've got softer shadows around the bottom actual colour of the road is actually lighting the objects this is uh, how you should always render uh, 3D objects to be compositive into live action um, because it gives you a, that much more real a real look however it does cost you a lot of render time but in my opinion it's worth it um, so if I was to slide this brightness controller up it doesn't actually go any further than 100 however we can manually input some figures so I'm going to go for three, uh, 200 percent now and do a test render see it's still too dark so just keep increasing this let's say 400 until it's bright enough too bright 300 300 there we go that, that'll sort of do us for now and I'll explain something else to you in a minute okay there we go you can see the complete uh, colour of the sand does not match the background plate anymore this is because uh, the light probe has a blue sky and all these colours in it as well but the majority is blue sky and basically that's what's lighting our white objects in blue now um, there's a couple of things that you can do we can try and adjust the probe to light this properly or we can just take in the alpha section and adjust the actual uh, match the colours to the background and vice versa until we get something nice I'm not going to talk you through all that for now but I hope you generally get the idea of where we're going with this is that um, normally I would not render the ground plate in this shot I would just r render each object separate say if we had an animation 60 frames we'd render out the 60 frames of uh, animation for the ball then again for the box then I would render out the shadow pass for each object so I'll probably render out four times and then composite them but just for this tutorial uh, you get the idea there however uh, this doesn't match up but we wouldn't see this in the render we'd just get the shadows but I will show you that in another video when we go m into more detail about compositing so I hope this is uh, giving you some idea anyway of how how it's you begin to use um, light probes in your rendering in Lightwave and hopefully you can use the same kind of techniques for your 3D program if you're using um, 3D Max or Maya or one of the other 3D programs I hope that you can uh, benefit from this anyway more soon